guys this is a food plot update for the main plot and tips that i use for fall blend so right off the bat the only really good thing i've got going for me is my soybean pods tons of pods in here that's about the only thing that's turned out fantastic because uh if you look back here this should have been a green carpet by now and it's not and i want to get into the importance of this in a minute but the big reason is it's nothing that i've really done it's just the fact that i haven't had any rainfall in 15 weeks now so my fall blends are growing terrible very spotty uh, forgive some of the shakiness I've been putting out another wave of seed because I've at least got some good news on the weather report today that uh, there's a lot of rain coming. So we may be having a break in this nasty dryness. But uh, usually my goal for my fall blends is at bare minimum, I like this to be about six inches deep to as much as a foot or more. So, the foot or more depends on which species it is. Uh, turnips tend to grow really big awful quick, so they can reach that height real quick. But, uh, obviously, I'm not meeting those goals. And under for the uh, soybean, I generally have a nice green carpet underneath this. And what I always plan for is when deer come in here to eat the soybean, they're gonna trample it down, which is what has happened here. There's a circle where it's matted down. A lot of deer activity here. This has been almost devastated. So it's opened up the ground. Uh, that means greens should be coming up through there. And there are greens in here. It's just not the way I want it. So that way, as the tonnage decreases as far as the grain goes underneath it the green tonnage is constantly growing it is less likely to be browsed at first but once these holes get opened up the deer will start annihilating the browse and of course the overall spot here was ease of access to the greens here for the deer without having to stick their head down in soybean which they often don't want to do that much unless they're forced to but at least i was offering them somewhere easy to pick and i have seen many a times when this works and i have rain and nice green plot here i get all kinds of camera action of bucks fighting right here because the deer concentrate here a lot but uh, we'll see how it goes i'm hoping and praying that this will come a downpour like they're saying uh, last estimate was an inch to inch and a half and if there's a good enough storm we might get more than that but that's plenty enough rain to get seed going so i've already redone the entire plot that's why my hands are tired it's all hand broadcasting for now now let's get into the tips the reason i put a greenery in here besides having it to help with the grains is I want soil improvements. You need something growing as many days out of the year as possible to keep this soil going and in keep increasing its abilities. So that's the big reason too why I'm planting this. And this type of cycle keeps generating better soil and better deer. And I will keep doing this until something better comes along and it's proven that it works. But for now, this is what I'm going to do. And I try to put as many species in here as possible. I used to, when I first started, I was a monoculture food plot guy. So this would have been nothing but clover. And part of this would have been corn here. One species here would have been like a um, Tecumani stuff. And I've totally changed my thought process. And this has panned out fantastic. So now, I want to reiterate something here when I was talking about depth of your fall blends. 
and this has been a while, but there's a study, and I want to see if I can find it again, but it came from the state of Texas, and I can't remember if it's a university or it's pen raised people that come up with this, but they said that uh, if your fall blends or your food plot in general is lip high, and lip high means extremely short, almost like a golf course look to it, uh, your bucks can lose as much as 15 inches of potential antler. You are also missing out on extra body size. Uh, also, parasites. This is a biggie, guys. Parasites are practically the number one reason why deer can't get bigger than what they are, other than nutrition problems. Parasites will hang out roughly one inch up the plants that you set out. That way they can use the warmth of the soil to keep them protected from cold and and also can protect them from other predatory insects so you don't want your deer browsing on something that just lip high all fall and winter and early spring long that's not good now i understand that some of you all have way different deer densities than i do and for you all that have high deer densities and you've maxed out your food abilities and it still looks that way you got one or two options. One is to make sure you got adequate nutrition in the soil. If that is a check mark, then you got to start thinning down your deer herd. I know people like seeing lots of deer, but at some point, too many deer will decrease the quality and size of your deer. So you need to find a balance in your feeding system and your deer population. And once you get that balanced, you'll start seeing much better deer. So that's my overall goal is I want depth here, but hopefully when the rain gets here tonight and tomorrow and the next day, um, that this will explode out of here and take off. It looks like it wants to. I've done all the prep I can as far as fertilizing beforehand, reseeding and reseeding and reseeding. I've done this four times. And unfortunately, not all weather forecasts are reliable, but this is by far the largest rain amount we've been estimated for. I got to keep doing it and eventually it will hit. But uh, that, real quick before I shut the video off, I'll show you some clover here. All right, so food plots that look like this, that is super short. Right, your deer can't take big bites out of this. You need big bites. That is a must if you want to try to get your deer in better shape. You want them taking large chunks of food out in one go versus having to cover the entire plot just to get a belly full. If I can fill up a deer, you know, basically in a third of this area here, I've done a good job for myself. All right, guys, so that's pretty much all I've got. Uh, just to kind of summarize real quick, water your, your plots. I didn't mention this earlier, but I'm adding it to the summary. If you have the ability to use water, do so. I don't, so I'm having to play with Mother Nature's end. Plant as many species as you can afford to plant. Also, prep your ground in advance. Use your if you have to fertilize to get poor soil going, do that. Eventually, your goal is to remove the fertilizer completely. So use your P and K if you got trace minerals available, boron, anything that you can do to fix your soil, get it going, and then plant your seeds, and it will take off really quick. That is a good way to establish a plot fast, and it's full of nutrition. So that will lead into my other videos that's coming here pretty soon. I am not at peak rut. That, that will basically be next week. And I've been hunting up here every day as much as I can. As soon as I'm home from work, I'm up here hunting. But today I had to take a break to get this seed out. Tomorrow I will be up here in the pouring rain waiting for Mr. Clean. So get it going guys, don't give up. Get those plots out there. Uh, and hopefully uh, you will have great success in your hunting this year. 
again if you like this content hit that like and subscribe button and that notification bell and as always enjoy the hunts and the time you have with each other have a good one